Ladies and gentlemen, it's fair to say this year is a very exciting year for video games and with the next-gen consoles on the horizon, Microsoft has just blown the lid with full specifications and actual gameplay of the new Xbox Series X, which we're going to be diving into in this video. And I'll admit that I didn't expect the console to be this powerful, but once you hear about these specifications, you are going to be incredibly impressed. This thing is going to be as powerful as most current gaming PCs, which is a very big statement for a console. And as someone who loves loves console games. I love talking about next gen. I wanted to have a discussion and see what you guys think of these specs down below. And let me know on day one, what console are you getting? The Series X or the PlayStation 5? So I think the big question on everyone's minds is what exactly is powering this machine and how does it compare to modern gaming PCs? So let's start with that processor, very important part of any machine. And this is going to be an eight core CPU with 16 threads that can have speeds of 3.8 gigahertz at peak frequency which is very very impressive considering that this is a four times improvement in both single core and overall throughput over xbox one x which is insane to me developers can choose to run with eight physical cores at the higher 3.8 gigahertz clock or all calls and threads be enabled with a lower 3.6 now, for that sort of speed in a console, that is mind-blowing to me. And another mic drop moment is that the Series X processor is capable of running four Xbox One S game sessions simultaneously on the same chip. That's right, this thing will run four games at once, and we actually have physical video to show you of that in action. And this is for a new feature called Quick Resume, which, as it states, allows you to seamlessly switch between multiple games from a suspended state almost instantly returning to where you were and what you were doing without waiting through long loading screens and this even works when the xbox is off which is unreal so you saw them switch to forza motorsport 7 then they switch to ori and the blind forest and you literally have a few seconds of waiting before you're right back into where you left off and the demo just keeps on going it's going to be unreal to have this feature going forward for games like i don't know call of duty zombies where you're doing a high round run and you want to pause the game and perhaps play something else you can do then you might be a little bit impressed but think about it even pcs can't do this right now you can only run one game at a time this is seriously impressive and since this is back compat with one 360 and original xbox games you can run all four generations of games at once now if gta 5 is this slick with this feature then it's game over now more importantly than the cpu is graphics performance because let's be honest when it comes to the xbox or the playstation whichever can deliver the more graphically enhanced experience is going to be the one people will go for and this gpu has 12 teraflops of compute performance via 52 compute units at 1.8 gigahertz now if you compare that to what was in the xbox one x that had six teraflops with only 40 computing units at 1.1 gigahertz it's around double the graphical power than the xbox one x which is nuts considering that can hit 4k 60 pretty easy and like i said at the beginning of the video we have actual gameplay to showcase what the graphical power is in the xbox series x so whilst we don't have a xbox series x game to show microsoft has shown a port of gears 5 a series x conversion of the game produced in just two weeks well, they upped all of the internal quality presets to the equivalent of pc's ultra adding improved contact shadows and brand new ray trace screen space global illumination and on top of that all the cutscenes in gears 5 usually run at 30 frames on one x but these were up to a flawless 60 frames and as you can see it looks insane for a console like the difference between a pc version and that is very minimal if that and performance wise this was looking extremely similar to what an rtx 2080 could produce so there we go that pc and console gap closing ever more considering that this game hadn't even begun to access the next generation features of the graphics card it is super impressive what they've managed to do with it and in just over two weeks of work as well like that's not even a fully finished port onto series x but when series x launches gears 5 will be updated and optimized so it will run even better and look like a series x game now another huge feature with the graphics in the next gen consoles is ray tracing and we've not seen it in action yet 
until now. And we can see this via a very early Series X Minecraft tech demo, which looks incredible. As you can see the difference from when ray tracing is turned on to when it's off, it is night and day difference. It looks like a completely different game. And this entire presentation here is ray traced. That demonstrates that despite the constraints of having to deliver ray tracing in a console rather than in a PC graphics card, the power of this console is capable of delivering like the most ambitious implementation of ray tracing and doing it in real time. And what's crazy is that even games that don't support ray tracing when they first launched, like Gears 5 and even Halo 5, are going to be updated to have ray tracing enabled in those games. So you'll have ray trace shadows, new screen space, global illumination. Like they even show demos of 360 games and Xbox original games having ray tracing and HDR enabled, which is absolutely wild. Combining that, they have some other really cool technologies in, such as native resolution, where back compact games will be enhanced to render at native 4K, even if they weren't originally designed for it. And there's an amazing demonstration here by Eurogamer, where certain Xbox One S titles will run at higher resolutions on the new console. And here we see Gears of War Ultimate Edition operating with a two times resolution scale, taking a 1080p game all the way up to native 4K. But you can just see the difference and that is just wild to me that even your older games are going to look better on this console. And it really makes you wonder if this can be done to games that aren't even 1080p, if they could be like 720p games upscaled to 4K or 900p games. And on top of that, like I said, there are older titles which are also going to be enhanced with HDR, even if the game never shipped with HDR support. And that even includes games on the original Xbox. These are games which are over 15 years old, running with 16 times the resolution via back compat with convincing perceptibly real HDR. How amazing of a gaming experience is that going to be to relive some of your favorite old games like that? But getting these sort of graphics can not only be done through just the GPU power, because compute power needs to be backed up with memory bandwidth. And this is insane to me. The Xbox Series X has 16 gigabytes of RAM and it's GDDR6 modules on the main board. 10 gigabytes of that 16 gigabytes will process at 560 gigabytes a second, and then 6 gigabytes will process at 336 gigabytes a second, which is insane. Xbox One X had 12 gigabytes of RAM in comparison. But another huge thing which is going to explain how on earth games can load so quick and we can have so many save states is the fact that on the hardware level, the Xbox Series X has its own custom SSD drive. And if you don't don't know what SSDs are, then that is solid state drive. It's a drive that doesn't have a physical disk. It's data which can be read and transferred so much quicker than normal hard drives that we have already in our current Xboxes and Playstations. And this is an SSD we've never seen before because it's a bit like a memory card of old rather than looking like a brand new normal SSD. It's pretty heavy and uses 4 watts of power. But compared to most hard drives which can do a few hundred megabytes a second, this will do 2.4 gig gigabits a second meaning those games are going to launch incredibly quick and it's so quick in fact that xbox series x games can only be installed on the inbuilt ssd and then an external ssd which they're creating which they've partnered up with seagate which is exactly what i meant when i said that it looks like a memory card back from playstation 2 if you've seen any leaks of the xbox series x from months ago there is a weird slot in the back and we now know that this is where this external one terabyte expansion just connects in but these games coming to xbox series x is going to be so big and require so much data to be loaded in so quick they can only be installed on these one terabyte ssds if you want to play your older games you can of course play them from a hard drive but of course they're going to load a lot slower and these games are going to be so big they need that speed instantly on top of that there's a technology they've got called intelligent delivery which means that you only need to install the piece of the game you need which is going to minimize the amount of content needed to 
be installed or downloaded to the SSD. So no more 100 gigabyte downloads when you just want to play Warzone. Hallelujah. And on top of that, they also have variable refresh rate, which I'm sure all you PC fanatics like me absolutely love and depend on this. And what's great about this is that if you have a capable display, the console will refresh as much as the screen is capable of. So we can already hit 120 hertz on the Xbox One X, but we can hit that indefinitely on Series X and probably even higher. And of course, high refresh rate goes hand in hand with frames per second and Xbox Series X is going to support up to 120 frames a second, which is nuts compared to the traditional 60 that we've gotten used to. So again, that PC and console line are crossing ever more. So a lot of stuff to take in and digest. Of course, if you guys have been keeping up with the news recently, E3 has been cancelled, which is really, really sad. But that hasn't stopped Microsoft from going all guns blazing and giving us this awesome news. So I want to know, now we know the specs, how impressed are you by this new Xbox? And are you going to be getting it on day one? Or are you still holding out for the PS5? Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe as I'll keep you guys updated whenever there is new news about the Xbox and PS5. I know this isn't my usual content if you subscribe to me, but I love talking about next-gen consoles and video games in general. It's just a very exciting time, really. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one.